Rich people are better than poor people. Money is the barometer of success. Intelligent, entrepreneurial people who work hard are more likely to make money. Now you can make a million different excuses as to why you're poor, but in the end, it was you or your parents' bad choices that put you in this situation. Rich people set the direction of the world. Sorry if this sounds effed up, but it's true. If you're running around getting pregnant at 16 and being stupid with your money, it's not the government or the white man's fault. You're poor. Hello everyone once again from the neoliberal dystopia of the United Kingdom. And what I just read you was pretty much like the mindset of so many neoliberals. It's that if you are poor, it's your own bad choices in life. And if you are wealthy, then congratulations, you're a successful capitalist. You have made it up the capitalist ladder. And why I started the video reading that is it plays so much into the mindset of just class and in terms of, you know, people's background. Because recently in that new David Beckham documentary, Victoria Beckham said that she came from a working class family, but she also was driven to school in a Rolls Royce by her dad. And I thought it was an interesting topic to discuss. I guess like the hypocrisy of how we view class in that many people who are successful like to paint it as them rising up the ranks of class and it's all because of them being so smart or talented and they deserve their success. But at the same time, we also look down upon working class people. So it's seen as both a good thing to come from a working class background, but a bad thing to remain as a working class person because the whole goal of neoliberalism is to crush anyone in the path for financial success and hopefully rising up the class ladder. Now, there is some differences, of course, between the UK and the US. The US is a more aspirational society. You know, you're told from a young age that like anyone can become president and someone like Barack Obama is a good, I guess, case study of just like a random dude who became president, I guess. But at the same time, Americans do look down on working class people too. We see it so much with AOC, who comes from like, a working class migrant background and basically for the first like two years of her being a politician they just kept calling her a bartender saying why don't you go do that instead like it's shameful to be a bartender these people are saying but like i said at the same time these rich politicians will always talk about being from migrant families or working class migrant families who had to struggle so hard to provide for their families so there is like this really weird contradiction in that so today what i wanted to do was just talk about why rich people pretend to be working class or even why rich people think they're working class or want to be from a working class background. Talk about my own upbringing, my own views on this stuff. Please like the video and in the comments, I guess I have like a couple questions to ask. Do you have a good example in your own life of someone who is very well off, definitely not from a working class background, but is pretty convinced they are? Also follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, on Freds, on Instagram, on Blue Sky. Also consider becoming a patron, trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. Benefits include access to the Discord server, access to my Nintendo Switch friend code, and access to old exclusive content. And also check out my second channel and check out the subreddit. All of the links are in the description. So before we talk about many like celebrities and wealthy people thinking they're working class, believing themselves to be from a working class background because their parents worked hard, I wanted to talk about myself quickly in terms of like class and like how I've been raised. So all of my grandparents were Irish immigrants to England. And on my mum's side, I had my grandma and granddad who came over very young. I think my grandma was like 16 or 17 in 1947, did like all the working class jobs, obviously didn't have a great education, wasn't well trained in a particular set of skills. So she did most manual labor jobs, like worked in factories, worked as like a waitress, worked as like a cleaner at someone's house, all that stuff for years and years. And my granddad did the same thing. And then I had my dad's family. When my grandma came from a bit more of a wealthier background, my granddad, pretty standard one, and he was an accountant and she was a secretary. So already you have a bit of a difference in class, but they are all immigrants coming to England. And my mum's parents in particular were like very working class, working very manual jobs, didn't have a great education or anything like that. And as such, my mum grew up very working class as well. One of 10 children growing up in London, going to of course like public schools. And my dad was one of three. They still grew up in the same kind of area, but then him and his siblings actually went to university because they did very well in school. 
And even there, you begin to see like the difference in class dynamics in that you have two parents who work and you have less children. And then you have these kids who will go to university to allow themselves to actually get out of, you know, the relative poverty they live in. Where with my mum's family, wasn't really a possibility. You had a more chaotic environment, had parents who were working all the time and like working class jobs and stuff. And there just wasn't as much help from the parents for these kids' education and stuff. And because my dad went to university, which was fairly rare um, back in the day, not like today, so many people go in the UK. Um, he went to university and he's basically just like risen through the ranks throughout his career to be a pretty successful like businessman. Doesn't own his own business or anything, does work a corporate job. And as such, because of that, we've had a very middle class upbringing, me and my three siblings. And I guess because my parents grew up working class, they kind of didn't want to spoil us very much. And also there was four of us. So, you know, sharing a bedroom with two of my brothers. As a teenager until I was like 17, I shared with my younger brother as well. Although my dad made good money because there was four kids, we didn't live like a really lavish lifestyle or anything like that, but I wouldn't lie and say I grew up working class. Like we had very nice things. We, they'd instill like values into us in that like, they wouldn't just buy us stuff randomly. You have to wait for like your birthday or Christmas because they didn't want us to be like spoiled kids. And they made me and my older brother get jobs and we were like 16, I guess just to instill like sort of certain values and responsibility into us. But when we were younger, we went on like summer holidays to places like Spain when we were a bit older. We also did that as well. So I have grown up firmly middle class and I have been extremely privileged to grow up in that way. Got to pursue my education, got to do a master's degree, got to quit my job during the pandemic and pursue YouTube full time, all thanks to this like secure home environment my parents gave to me and stuff. So yeah, I totally recognize a lot of my like relative success with something like YouTube is very much down to my class and my upbringing and the relative stability of growing up in this environment. Now, something very interesting to note though, because my parents obviously were about my age during the neoliberal height, I guess, with Thatcher and Reagan. And I said to them a couple of weeks ago, which prompted a massive argument, that my mum grew up poor. And they got really mad at this. Like, I thought I was just stating a fact. I was like, you know, you grew up poor, and then you guys like climbed the capitalist ladder and you have this nice life now, right? But they took it as an insult. Like, how dare you say that? And that's because, to them, brainwashed by neoliberalism, they think me calling them poor is an insult because they grew up at a time where the poor were so demonized as leeches and scum. And I even notice this if I ever get into conversation with them about like benefits or the welfare state, they will say stuff that is very, you know, out of the era of the 1980s, right? They're not terrible people or anything, but it's very clear to me they have been brainwashed by neoliberalism where they see your economic status as a sign of your personal worth. And it's also interesting because I do have a lot of family members still who are very much working class people who have similar jobs to my grandma and my granddad on my mum's side and stuff. I call it snobbiness, but it is interesting how like we're so proud, a lot of people that we come from a working class migrant background like myself, but at the same time, we see that poverty that our ancestors or like my grandparents lived in and if you point that out, that's a bad thing. How dare you? Like, my parents weren't leeches of the government. They worked really hard. They weren't poor despite growing up as, you know, migrants in England in the 40s and 50s and 60s and having, you know, 10 children and both having to work. It's a very interesting dynamic there. I have no problem admitting my privilege and class and recognising how much I've had a leg up over other people because I knew people at work who basically got kicked out at 18 went to university, went straight into a job, and they have like no savings because they've been living like paycheck to paycheck since then. And they haven't had the opportunity to build up savings because everything's going on living expenses like rent, food and all that stuff. So I never had to do that straight out of uni. So I'm lucky in that regard. And I appreciate, you know, all the things my parents have done for me. But at the same time, I won't pretend just because my grandparents were working class, that somehow I had a working class upbringing because I really didn't. Now, Victoria Beckham, so you guys would have seen this in the Netflix thing. She said both our parents worked really hard and she was talking about David Beckham's family as well, who do appear more traditional working class. And then David takes exception with this because he's like, you know, you didn't grow up like me. What did your dad drive you to school in? And she says a Rolls Royce. And the Metro just reporting about her 
like general upbringing. In an interview with Vogue back in 2017, she describes how her parents added annexes to her house as their fortunes increased. The publication explained how her father was an entrepreneur who made a killing in the 1980s boom. They bought it as a shell and did it up themselves. I remember my mum cooking on a camping stove because we didn't have a proper kitchen. By the time of this interview, Victoria's family home had a swimming pool, a pond full of koi, carp, a tennis court, a playhouse, statues of cherubs and a well-stocked bar. And in her youth, Victoria had a part-time promotional job at Wix hardware store and she would put half her earnings into a separate bank account for tax. She added that her dad worked really hard to have the money for us to have a nice house. Her parents' wealth seems far more than my parents' wealth, but I relate in the sense that my parents didn't come from like wealthy backgrounds or anything, but especially my dad with his career, he just worked really hard to become successful in the typical capitalist sense, you know, having a house, having a family, going on holidays, having money for nice things and stuff, right? Seems to be quite similar to Victoria Beckham's parents, but they've just been even more successful where they have this ability to really, you know, make their fortune. And there's nothing obviously wrong with that, but I guess it's just being a bit delusional about how that made you privileged because even if her parents grew up poor and grew up in a certain environment like my parents, I didn't grow up in that environment. I grew up with my dad making decent money, so I did not have an upbringing. And yeah, I think she might be conflating working class with working hard. Because even if her parents were working class and worked hard as well, it doesn't mean like she's from a working class home. It is a weird thing like class mobility, because you do have an element of these people know what it's like, maybe her parents, to grow up in a certain environment, but at the same time to her, she is not working class. The same way I'm not working class, despite my mum especially, but also both my parents being generally working class. So it's an interesting thing with her specifically. She is really not the worst example, in my opinion, because I was reading about her family. One of her ancestors was like a communist who was big buddies of Karl Marx. I thought it was quite funny, just in contrast with that clip. Victoria Beckham isn't alone in thinking she is working class or not wealthy, despite being raised in a particular way. And there's just an article in Salon after this about why do so many celebrities pretend to have struggling working class backgrounds? And it just goes for an, a bunch of other people who also say this. So other celebrities who have also lied about their backgrounds, Anya Taylor-Joy is a Nepo baby of elite levels. The British American Argentine actress said that she left school in the UK at 14 to New York to enroll in a director's program and that she used her savings to support herself. But internet sleuths found that the actress went to a prestigious prep school Queen's Gate School, one of the most elite in the county, and Taylor Joy's grandfather is a British diplomat and her father is a former British Argentine investment banker. More internet sleuthing will show that the actress also comes from a long line of European aristocrats and lords. Another celebrity and musician, Lady Gaga, grew up in one of New York City's most expensive neighborhoods, the Upper West Side. In an interview with New York Magazine, she said some of her family had extreme wealth, others were on welfare and scholarship but some were in the middle, which was my family. But the pop star did go to school at an expensive all-girls Catholic school in her UWS neighborhood, Sacred Heart. You also have someone like Daisy Ridley who denied that she was privileged and suggested there is little difference between her and her Star Wars co-star, John Boyega, who grew up in Peckham, London and attended Theatre Peckham on a hardship fund. John grew up on a council estate in Peckham and I think me and him are similar enough that no, also, I went to a boarding school for performing arts, which was different. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I've just never been asked that before. So I'm like, I don't think so. Daisy Ridley also denied that nine years of private education provided her with confidence. No, no, I think also it's taken me a little while to be okay with it. I was always fairly confident and I think that comes from being part of a big family who are all quite chatty. And we've got one more example for you. And this is indicative more of self-made billionaires apparently elon musk is one and this is an article responding to an insider article about elon musk having a lot of wealth as a kid elon musk left south africa at the age of 17 with 2000 in his pocket given to him by his mother after moving to canada he was forced to work the most difficult jobs in order to earn as much money as possible for a living he first worked on a relative's farm then chopped logs in vancouver and cleaned boiler rooms at sawmills earning 18 dollars an hour after Kimball, his brother moved to Canada, the brothers took turns calling businessmen, asking them to lunch to arrange a job. The Bank of Nova Scotia executive Peter Nicholson liked them and became Elon's mentor. 
offering him an internship at the bank for $14 an hour. In addition, young Elon earned money by assembling computers and repairing them, and after moving to study at the University of Pennsylvania, he, along with, with a fellow student, turned his house into a nightclub on weekends with an entrance fee. Imagine having other people who aren't rich writing about how you're a self-made billionaire, because a lot of that is either ignoring context or just lies. Like Elon Musk's dad was a millionaire by the time he was 30. Elon Musk's dad said he basically sent both his kids through college with money from the emerald mine that he had a stake in. Elon actually moved back in with his dad, apparently as well. And his dad was saying that he had a super privileged, you know, upbringing, had any, everything he wanted in apartheid South Africa. So yeah, Elon Musk had a massive leg up. But the thing is, we know he's an idiot, so I'm not gonna really say he earned his success, but there are plenty of rich people who come from rich backgrounds who still work hard, who still, you know, actually have to earn the success. But most rich people do just inherit a lot of their wealth. Sure, tech bro entrepreneurs maybe do work like crazy for a certain part of their life, but then someone like Jeff Bezos like doesn't even really work anymore, right? Like you get to a point where you don't work. And the common thing uniting like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk is they all came from wealthy backgrounds. So although that doesn't diminish all their amazing achievements of being terrible capitalist billionaires, it does show you that yeah, nearly all rich people already have a leg up because they have generational wealth from their family, which they inherit, or sends them to the best schools or gives them like tutors and stuff like that. But yeah, I find that really interesting, especially like with some of those actors and actresses. But yeah, it's amazing that they don't realize they're privileged. Like it seems like Daisy Ridley was pretty shocked. Someone was even asking her like, you know, do you think you had a bit of privilege over John Boyega who grew up poor and only did theater school and like a hardship fund? Like, do you think you growing up rich, like, helped you in any way or helped your confidence. And I guess that's the thing with rich people. And I mean, I get it can be like really insufferable. Cause we're like, you're so privileged. How do you not recognize? But there's like a whole host of things going into it because yeah, we do have the privilege that they don't recognize. And I'm saying, you know, I'm privileged and I recognize that and that's totally fine. You know, I don't feel bad really because what can I do about that? I was born into these circumstances. Not my fault I had privilege, but I think there's a lot of guilt societal guilt maybe that goes into it. These people both feel bad, but they also think it diminishes their achievement. Daisy Ridley's probably thinking like, you know, there's no difference between me and John Boyega because if I say there is, then I'm basically admitting that he's more deserving of being here because he had to work harder and I didn't have to work as hard because I had more privilege than him. And a lot of them just don't want to do that. Like Lady Gaga saying she was kind of middle class but going to private school. If you go to private school, you're not middle class. If your parents have an extra like 10 to 40 grand sitting around a year to send you to private school, you're not middle class, you're upper class, you're wealthy. But it's obviously because we are a neoliberal capitalist society and that's how we view class. Like it's a good thing to come from a humble background, but what makes that even better is if you have not let that get you down, you haven't become lazy, you haven't become a leech, you've become industrious, you've become an entrepreneur, you've decided, you've made a choice, you have such free will in this capture system that you're not going to be the same as your parents. You're not going to go work in a factory or a mine. You're going to work smart, you're going to work hard, and you will be successful. And if you actually make it one day, then that's so much better. But what if you didn't grow up working class, well, just lie about it. Say like you're Elon Musk who had a millionaire dad and was spoiled rotten and just because you worked a few jobs when you moved for university, that means you're also like self-made working class. Two more things I wanna talk about. It's the aesthetics of being working class and just pretending to be it, like knowing you aren't but pretending, but also expanding a bit more and actually thinking it. So there was a Vice story from a while ago called 16 more stories of posh kids pretending not to be posh. And I found some of these quite funny. So one of my closest friends would tell me that she knows what it's like to come from a low income background and not have enough money to live. Her dad is a famous art dealer and she was given an authentic Matisse print for Christmas. A now semi-famous food Instagrammer who claims he started his project because he and his mates didn't have enough money to go out during university, so had to socialize through shared cooking at home, lived with a literal royal while he was a student and was well known for throwing extravagant parties including one with a bouncy castle inside a student flat. In sixth form, I dated a guy from a private school who introduced me to his group of friends and the girls I hung out with. 
They all wore ripped leather jackets and secondhand clothes and hung out in really grim bars in central London. They would always talk about being skint, mind sweep drinks and get gross men to buy them rounds. I just assumed they were comp girls like me until one weekend we went to one of their parents' flats. It was literally on the Brighton seafront and worth a few million. Her dad was there and he made us home-brewed beer. Turns out they all went to a very prestigious private school and had massively wealthy families. That one reminds me of that song, Common People, by Pulp, which is like this criticism of wealthy people wanting to basically cosplay as working class people. And the psychology of that is like super interesting. It's like they see it as some sort of, of game, some sort of fantasy. I want to be like, you know, common people, as the song says. But also just like the song talks about, if they want, they can just leave. And it's just an aesthetic. It's not reality for them. And it's just fun for them to pretend they're like everyone else when they're not like everyone else. And they're actually, you know, super privileged and super rich, so much so that they can pretend to be working class to loads of people at university. But anyway, I found an interesting article by Gabriella Swirling. So inverted snobbery could mean rich people fool themselves about being working class. One in three of the richest people identify as working class, a survey has revealed. The latest British Social Attitude Survey by the National Centre for Social Research revealed that in 2022, 32% of Britons in the top quarter of household incomes, those earning more than 40k, identified as working class. So the one thing I will say is that 40k in the UK is a decent enough salary um, but I wouldn't say it necessarily means you aren't working class if you're in a certain environment. But yeah, by and large, most people earning 40k aren't actually like working class people. However, 48% of those from the poorest households, those earning less than 19,000, said they felt middle class or had no class identity. As many as 62% of those in working class jobs identified as such. So another study by the London School of Economics published in 2021 interviewed 175 actors, architects, accountants and TV professionals. Of those, 36 people who had an undeniably middle class upbringing thought of themselves as working class. Of the 36, 24 participants were actors or worked in television. Researchers said it was understandable that the people in those industries misrepresent their upbringing as there is a symbolic market for downplaying class privilege in these professions. So I think some of those studies expose the, like, the perfect hypocrisy of class in neoliberalism, that you have people who actually are working class thinking they're middle class, and people who are middle class or upper class thinking they're working class. Because like I said, it works in both ways. Like Working class people, like my parents' generation, they don't want to be seen as poor, they don't want to be seen as working class. So they don't want to describe themselves as working class. Like, yuck, working class. That's the people who, I don't know, work at McDonald's and get benefits and stuff. I don't, I'm not like that. I'm better than that. And then people who are middle class saying they're working class because it might be an aesthetic thing. They might be lying to themselves. Maybe they did come from a, you know, fairly working class background, but are now wealthy and have kind of climbed the social hierarchy and they still kind of think that way, which is a bit more fair. But I think it just shows, you know, in Britain especially, our perspective on class is like very, very warped. But it also becomes quite hard sometimes, especially with so many people going to university, getting like grad jobs, which might pay better than, than if they hadn't gone, but they do come from working class backgrounds. So then you're kind of like caught in two directions because like my dad, for example, your children have a middle class upbringing, but you yourself didn't. And I also think everything here just shows how much neoliberalism has distorted class rather than being maybe like a more factual measure of how much you earn and what environment you grow up in as a result of that, it's more about your attitude to like work, to capitalism, to neoliberalism and society's attitude. Like if you want to be working class and have a working class job, that's a bad thing. Even though we rely on lower paid workers more than anyone else, it's seen as a bad thing. And remember with the pandemic and all these people still had to work, these essential jobs as they were known. But apparently if someone is content with doing one of these jobs in neoliberal capitalism, that is something no one should strive for. And that's why capitalism and neoliberalism is pretty ridiculous because it basically makes society think that the people who make our societies run and do these essential jobs are actually not as good as the rest of us. And actually if you go to university 
and go work some absolutely bullshit job for, I don't know, a hedge fund making people loads of money or just any general corpo job, that's better for society because you're more industrious, you're more of an entrepreneur, you're more of a go-getter and someone being satisfied being a bin man, being a cleaner, being a caretaker at a school, that's a bad thing. Even though we need those people far more than we need university educated people who go into corporate jobs. We need them far more than we need people like my dad, for example, right? And that's just something as a society under neoliberalism, we don't value anymore. And while working class people used to be recognized, especially with union movements as the backbone of any society, now they're seen as a group of people who should try and improve their lot in life. And they should all aspire to be middle class and wealthy. And again, with the inherent contradictions of neoliberalism, if everyone did that, then society would probably just fall apart because all the essential workers wouldn't be doing the essential jobs anymore because they don't pay enough and they'd aspire to all enter the corporate workplace as well. But anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.